C. Lindelof videos. <clears throat> Finding the range and domain of an inverse trigonometric function. We started with this function in our last video that y is equal to 2 sine x minus 1. We did some work and we found that the inverse of that function is equal to inverse sine of x plus 1 divided by 2. And now what we want to do is figure out, well, what's the range and domain of this function? And I think that the easiest way to do it is to start with this function, if possible. So all I'm going to do here, this is something that we know. We know that whatever the domain and range of this is, translates to the range and domain of this, this function here, the inverse function. That is to say that the domain values of f become the range values of y, and the range values of f become the domain values of f uh, inverse. So let's look at that. The first thing I'm going to do is this. I'm going to let y equal 2 sine x minus 1. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for sine x. And that's going to help a, a lot, and I'll show you why in just a second, but that's going to help a lot in just a second. So I'm going to solve this out. I'm going to get y plus 1 is equal to 2 sine x. Divide both sides by 2 and get sine x is equal to y plus 1 divided by 2. That's sine x. Well, we know the range of this becomes the domain for the inverse function. So all I'm going to do is set that this way. I'm going to say, well, sine x is y plus 1 over 2, and its normal range is negative 1 to 1, isn't it? So I'm going to start with that idea. If this is bothering you, go and look at the sine function and see what the normal range is. What's the lowest height, negative 1? What's the highest height, 1, of just sine x? And this tells us how we've manipulated that. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2 and get negative 2 is greater than or equal to y plus 1. I multiply by 2 to get rid of this 2 down here, which is less than or equal to 2. Now what I'm going to do is to get rid of this positive 1, I'm going to add negative 1 everywhere. So I get negative 3 is less than or equal to y. And y is less than or equal to 1? Sure, 1. I like it. Right, is less than or equal to 1. So how does that help me? Well, that helps me a ton because this is range, so it has to be the domain. So now I can say that the domain of the inverse of f of x is the range of this one is, right, not y, but x, right? Because we switched x and y, so this now becomes x. So x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 3, and less than or equal to 1. So there is our, there is our domain. The range we should know just by looking, and the range will be negative pi halves to pi halves. All right, you guys, I hope this was really helpful. This is kind of weird stuff, but this can definitely be done. Um, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. Appreciate it.